It comes from Bell Labs, like a couple of other things we like and use. I don't know, C, Unix, C++. They had a very, very good statistics research uh, department where this was written. Um, it won a highly prestigious software systems um, award 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Uh, very short citation that I almost quoted in, in full. And, and that was then for, for S and I sort of the surviving dialect of S. But will forever alter the way people analyze, visualize, and manipulate data. And it's really those three. Analyze, visualize, manipulate. It's an elegant, widely accepted, and enduring software system's conceptual integrity thanks to the insight, taste, and effort of John Chambers, who was basically the, the, the sole person at Galaxy who, who drove that around. And it's a meaningful prize because, you know, you may have heard of some of the other things that won these prizes. I mean, most of them were actually technologies that got picked with that prize, which have endured and have changed how we do things and what we do with that. R itself, it's sort of a funny story. Um, it's all politics. Um, Bell Labs, Bell, the phone company, was a monopolist um, in the phone industry, was not allowed to sell software, even though they did a lot of software um, research and software system creation. So they, they um, licensed the software away, there was a commercial, a commercial vendor that, that sold it, that vendor never had a, had a Mac version at the time, so two academics in New Zealand started writing a new implementation, um, providing the language with, with then some, some changes in, um, below it. It's been a GNU project since 1997, it's been on the net since 96 or something like that, and it's now maintained by a group of maybe 80 um, core academics. And it's, it's mainstream now. Um, this was, um, again, just two quick uh, screenshots, a very complimentary, very great article in the New York Times by um, Ashley Vance, um, who writes there about technology now, who in the same space about a week later had an article about a certain South African living in uh, London with a software company that we all made. Uh, so this came a little before. Uh, the other one I just put up, um, because it's sort of kind of ironic dice, I think, is that there's a job search thing. We had a little R finance conference um, in, in Chicago last month that I helped put together, and on the first invited keynote, someone talked about R in the cloud, and he wanted to use that as a time filler, he, he logged into Amazon, set up his AMI to get R going there, to, to show how it works on a, on a set of multiple machines, and he just you know, tried to play the video back to, to fill the three minutes while the Amazon system blew it up. That, that didn't quite work, but you know, his key point was, and I'm borrowing that here, that, you know, Hell, if there's a video introducing R at DICE, because it makes you, you know, more demarkable on the job than it really actually comes for you. This is sort of a quick background about how R grew. There were sort of several implementations. They're, they're often referred to sort of by the colors of the books. There was sort of blue book, white book, green book. The yellow one is the most most, most recent one, and that's, that's all sort of um, John Chambers. And what's, what's important there is that you know, in the beginning they talked more about S and then S plus, and the company who did that is basically gone now. And uh, John Chambers himself is, a, is an R core maintainer and uh, and better now. Um, um, R is a fairly large system. Um, I think my R package, even though I split some things off, was for a while among the larger ones. It's sort of a couple of dozen megabytes, but uh, so there's there's a lot of functionality there, but it derives a lot of functionality from Cram, that sets a work done, of course, on C10 and C10, so it's a comprehensive R archive network. Um, the, folk, the folks behind R have also been doing biannual releases, so what you see, if you can see it at the bottom, is basically the six months mark when releases were made, and there are the version numbers, and something happened in 1.6 which made us not get a data point. And what's on the axis then is the corresponding number of packages for each of these releases. And um, uh, John Fox, who's a quantitative sociology professor, used this and compiled this data and, and put this chart up last year and then kind of said this with a big smile on his face that this is the best non fudge log log plot he's ever seen. Because, you know, this is what exponential growth looks like. It's 40% more packages every year. And that's something, and I should open a parenthesis there, which is really useful. They only, the, everybody can write a, a, um, a package to extend R and submit it to Pram. Cran will then run a regression test on it that's enforced. If your package does not pass R command check, they will not upload it. That often includes test cases, has to include documentation, and does a lot of syntactical and semantical checks on it. It's a really good process. The nice thing is, they actually do that on a bunch of Debian machines, which means that everything that's on the archive 
built on our system, so we can we can then reuse them. And in the and um, Colin had a comment yesterday on, on something else. Where, you know, is there a DH made for it? And yes, we we we, 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 we built one which, which makes building these packages or converting these packages. Um, two quick application examples because you may not have used them. Now, if you're into analyzing data and you don't do it for a living, and particularly if you live in North America, use that with sports data. I mean, Americans are obsessed with sports, they're obsessed with numbers, and with slicing and dicing. <coughs> this is a, um, it's a live web demo, so it's, it's basically whatever they call that these days, an, an information dashboard on, on baseball data, it's a public data set, and you can just go and drill down, you, you know, get a team, and then for the team you get a picture, it's all done with um, R embedded inside Apache. It's a friend of mine actually owned that, that project, and immediately you get <coughs> high end visualization. So what it does is um, for, this, for Josh Beckett, he apparently only throws about five different pictures, and I think there are eight different categories in, in the data set. And it shows a density distribution of the speed of the pitch here, um, and then down here, it's really a I hope you can see that at the back. It's basically four dimensions of data plotted. It's um, where in the in the strike zone you put the pitch. It's um, you, so that, that's x and y positioning. It uses color to indicate how fast or slow um, the pitch is, and then it uses 2D interpolation of the data to give an intensity count on how many of those have thrown to the spot. And that's that's sort of a, a nice way to show a bunch of. Uh, um, and then I, that one I cooked up in the lobby of the, um, of the, of the hotel yesterday. I had a snippet of code that, that, that did something similar before, and I didn't originally write it. So this is this is it. It's six lines of code, and it goes to the SVN upstream archive. It doesn't have to request the log because <coughs> they happen to have them pre-cooked as text files. So what I'm doing is I'm just unrolling an implicit sequence to show the six pieces of nine gives you the four numbers. Each of that number gets written to it gets passed to um, implicit function gets appended to an URL, then I read from that URL, have the text, I grab out all the lines starting with R and the number, giving me the SVN release number, and then basically just execute with R, put out the, 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 the second um, atom. Um, all that comes back from that list, so I get, because it's, it's four years, I've then four long vectors of text, text that get concatenated and then tabulated. Which then basically gives me for each of the unique occurrences account. So user foo may have had 357 commits out of out of those um, four lines, um, and it's then one line to create a nice plot. Um, you know what statisticians and information scientists like to call a nice plot because they don't like pie charts or bar charts. It's a dot plot, and again that's on a on a log axis. So you see that one guy who basically never sleeps, has about as many commits as everybody else in the project over that, uh, over that time period. And this is sort of just to show that, you know, you have to learn a little bit about the language, but it's extremely powerful because I've, I've combined reading the data in, you know, grabbing through it, I mean, inside the language are, I think, three different variants of regex, so whichever variant you like, you, you can use, and you get high-end information analysis or organization as a uh, um, quick demo. Um, so if you haven't used R, um, well, on this platform it's pretty easy. Up here it's all our base, our export, and off you go. Um, we have a fairly high number of, of related packages that's not even using R depends, just the ones that start with R hyphen something. Or the Debian testing system that came up to 147, and on uh, Jaunty I think it's 132. Um, Information is here and here. Um, this is a uh, uses the, the GForge port of, of what has been left over from SourceForge, public code, where a lot of projects now sit with daily battles and regression tests, all that stuff. It's very nice. Um, a lot of really nice graphs that I think called R graph gallery, so just Google for that. And because uh, in the beginning there were a lot of complaints that it was hard to Google for R, um, there's some you know, front ends to searching that. Um, but what brings me here is revolution computing, and you know, I 
don't really, really speak for revolution, but I'm, I'm, I'm not bought by that. Revolution wants to be to R what you know, economic level is to Linux. Um, commercial open source um, done properly, giving writing extensions, giving these extensions back and, and packaging it. Uh, it's a company with the headquarter in, uh, in Connecticut, in New Haven. It builds on something called Linda Spaces, who uh, have been in um, scientific computing, parallel computing for a very, very long time. There's a thing called network spaces, particularly if you're into Python, say, it's, it's, it's really nice. I maintained it in Debian for a very long time and very few uh, users. There's a good Dr. Doss article um, um, describing it from about two years ago, I think. So, um, um, other commercial players from the S languages are much smaller and significant or, or have died. Um, these, are, these are good people, they have good contact with the, um, with the R Foundation, the R Core team. Um, some projects have been released, um, and we're trying to get something more into um, into the 9.10 release, and so sort of, um, that's why I'm here. More stuff will be coming. Um, um, so just to summarize, data matters a lot. It grows a lot. R is probably the open source tool to work well with data. So I never ever want to see another group block uh, chart. Um, because you can do it much better um, this way, or Excel chart for that matter. Um, Ubuntu and Debian have arguably the best support um, among Linux systems for most tools, you know, Emacs extensions, a whole lot. Revolution will add additional bells and whistles, and we want to bring those in and, and hopefully have them in, uh, uh, in Kali. Um I think I'm running out of questions, but the last slide is questions. We will have a session now in room seven, just a general round table if you want to talk about it. Thank you.